Hello and welcome to the show. We are here today on Forza Horizon 4 with another team adventure. This one we're using some B-Class cars. However, the rules were your vehicles couldn't have tyres any bigger than 245s. Generally, when it comes to Forza, the bigger the tyre, the better, pretty much. Uh, and I like playing around with tyre rules as that tends to often make for quite interesting adventures. So, yeah, for this one, tyre widths were limited. 245, the biggest. I have gone for a old favourite, shall we say, of my vehicles, the Bentley 4.5 litre. It just works in B-Class. <laughs> it's just a good vehicle. This It doesn't... Now, I don't actually know technically what size tyres it has on it because it doesn't say, but I can tell you they are probably less than 200. They are very, very very pizza cutter tyres that we've got going on here, so yeah, it doesn't have particularly big tyres, and it, it works pretty well in general B-Class races, so I'm hoping it will work here, and it's a good overall B-Class car as well. Uh, it's good off-road, it's all-wheel drive, engine swapped, uh, rally tyres, let's just generally make it quite a fearsome vehicle. I believe Ninetales' machine has got way too much power and very little in terms of anything else. Uh, I did spot the car ahead of us, the Fiat. Looks like it's running on certainly not rally tyres. I don't know what compound tyre it's on, but it certainly doesn't look like rally tyres. So I might be better than that onto the dirt. That was a... <laughs> there was a gap. We fired the Bentley through the gap, but we did it cleanly. Hello, drifty car. Not into the wall there. If we can help it, we will leave space for our teammate. I've had a little bit too much. I've got exploring all of the shops. That's not quite so good. Uh... <laughs> Okay, shop exploring, bad on lap number one. But we can, we can also do that. I could also do the horn, but I was about to having to do some gear shifts. The escort's going to try to have a look around the outside. It might hold it for now. I'd be surprised if it can match the Bentley for acceleration uh, when we get that option. Ah, oh, Stallion got stuck on the wrong side. That's less than ideal. Me and Scotty managing to make it through side by side. Uh, that's unlucky for Stallion, that. Cadet, I think it was. Looked very, very quick indeed. Um, we have fended off the challenge from the Escort for now. I have a feeling this circuit might not be quite working for the uh, for the blue team vehicles by any chance. Uh, we, we're very good. That's the corner where I make up all the time on uh, on our Fiat. Now, I do believe... Uh, this is Scirocco. It's a very quick car, actually. That is on street tyres. You don't get much PI to play, or as anywhere near as much PI to play around within that car, of course, as you do with the Bentley and a few of the others. So I believe that thing might be on street tyres. We are probably going to have our work cut out defending from that in the later stages. I've raced it before. It's a good car, the Scirocco. As I say that, it ends up in the wall, but... Uh, we have to see. Points-wise, I mean, we have quite a lot. <laughs> we have quite a lot. Stallion's drop to the back was unfortunate in that one for sure. Uh, we're going to spin the wheels a little bit through there. Uh, we have got, of course, I, for some reason I was thinking Gliska was on the other team. He isn't. This is on ours. We've got a 1 2 3 currently for red team. Blue have got fourth and fifth, but not too many other places uh, around. I would have been curious to see how that cadet would have done had it not ended up the wrong side of the checkpoint. Uh, let's throw the car through there. Nothing stupid for the remainder of this race would be good. I think the Bentley's working. I think it's safe to say. I mean, we've actually pulled... That's a really big group of cars fighting back there as well. We're... It's sure it's a fun group of cars. You always want to be in the battles. You always want to be in, in the midst of the pack uh, in some ways in terms of a uh, exciting race as well. For me, it's nice to at least know we're going to be scoring some good points. Uh, Blue Team have got some ground back, shall we say, in this one. Levercap's got up to third, actually. Uh, driving up to second with the Abarth. Oh, missed a checkpoint doing it. Or... yep. Yeah. <laughs> they kept going for a little while. <laughs> and Blue Team had, like, half a lap of a looking like really good recovery. And then it all fell apart. It, it, all, it all fell apart, the Blue Team. Again, don't do anything stupid with the Bentley. With a couple of corners left to go. I say a couple of corners left to go, actually. We've got one more lap, of course we do. Uh, Scotty's got the Escort back up to third. Yeah, it's, 
I said before, I've used this car before, it is surprisingly good. The other Bentley, the 8 litre, is terrible in B-Class, really difficult. I mean, none of them are using the standard engines, of course. While, you know, the classic engines are interesting, they're not very fast on Forza. It is, it is safe to say, even with upgrades, they just generally don't work, so they get swapped out. I think... I think this is using a BMW i6. I think. I think that's the engine. Either way, pretty good swap to make this car work. And yeah, converting it, even with it on tiny, tiny tyres, with it being all-wheel drive and relatively light in the grand scheme of things, it kind of just works. And we have completely and utterly run away at the front of the field here, which is nice as we round the final corner. The Bentley's going to take victory, and Red Team are not going to get a clean sweep of the podium, it doesn't look like. But we will take the first victory. Blue Team were unlucky. Two missed checkpoints cost both their above and the Cadet. Hell, the Cadet works way back up to fifth. So those cars were looking fast. Sadly, not quite to be. So we head to Ambleside next. The Ambleside Scramble where Bentley should, should be good. Uh, we tried to get Stevie back connected, but I don't think it's quite worked in time. Um, <laughs> I love Forza sometimes. I really, really, really do. There are going to be cars that don't like this. Oh, I'm starting on the front row as well, alongside Ninetales. Um, yeah, there are vehicles that won't like this. B-Class is difficult to build a good overall car for B-Class. Not too bad building a specialist car. Night House is going to be one that doesn't like it. Christ, that thing just didn't go. Um, yeah, building an overall car for B-Class can be quite tough. Uh, because, as I said, you don't necessarily have all that much PI to, to work with, which means making certain cars actually usable uh, for certain situations is yeah is more is more difficult the we have a fiat behind us uh, following us the above i would expect the escorts to be on i presume the escorts to be on rally tires to be fair if you've got off the line quite well here there's a good chance you are going to be you know working on the rally tires the above i would imagine will be all-wheel drive and rally tires uh, as well it's got up to third i butchered the final corner but we are okay for now if me and the little fiat can run away at the front that would be good. We are we are Team No Roof. Team No Roof versus Team Roof is currently what we got with the top four. Uh, Stallion's got a roof as well. So, <laughs> let's go Team No Roof. We can do this. I mean, I would imagine it would be quite chilly in here. It's not quite winter levels of chilly. It'd still be quite chilly inside the Bentley. It looks, it looks like a cold, brisk English morning here. Uh, we're wandering a little bit wide through there. I'm hoping I have the power to get away with that. Just sort of stamp on the throttle and hope that we can get a decent exit. And my car doesn't like that transition there, which alarms me slightly, as here comes the Abarth looking for a way into the fight. I might have to do the honourable team thing and let the, the, Abarth, the Spider go. 124 Spider go if it is quicker than me. I'm not 100% sure it's actually now stuck fighting with the... Uh, 695, so we will have to wait and see how that one goes. Um, yeah, like, so they carry way more quarter speed than me. Scotty's missed a checkpoint. Blue team, it's the saga of the missed checkpoints for blue team so far in this one. Uh, both the cars behind carry way more corner speed than me. I think I have to accelerate the pair of them, which is going to make it frustrating for them trying to get past me. I wonder if Leathercat might have hit a tree in all of that. There's a tree on the outside that is incredibly easy to end up clonking into. And other caps dropped back, but not quite a missed checkpoint level of drop back gap. So <laughs> that might have been what we've seen there. If I can keep everything smooth in the Bentley, we may well stroll. I say stroll, it isn't all straightforward here. Um, with the bar, we're going with a bar for the 124. Sorry, there's so many bloody Fiat's around the place, busy hell. Uh, <laughs> Nine Tails was always going to have a tough time with what is presumably a street-based muscle car, and you can tell there are some vehicles that are clearly more aimed towards the tarmac races. Uh, Nine Tails will need a longer street circuit, which I don't know if we're going to one that's long enough for that car. <laughs> it just wants a straight line, is what it wants. Um... 
Yeah. Oh, and uh, smeg the other. F uh, was that the other. Yeah, it's the other fear we had that was on some form of rose tires. I don't quite know what. Uh, there's a parked up Scotty inside uh, <laughs> with the clown horn, of course, as we go past on this the final lap. We are going to take, as long as I don't hit the tree or butcher up the final corner, we are going to take win number two out of two for the Bentley as we round that final turn. It'll be another... I don't know it will be another. It will be the first one, two, three for the red team. Uh, we didn't quite get it in the last round. Our cars worked. Blue team, unfortunately, missed some checkpoints along the way again. The car's certainly not quite as happy uh, on the dirt. We will take round number two. Up next, we head to the Broadway Village Circuit. A, well, interesting track, this one. At times can be a little bit more difficult to overtake around here. One long straight, at least that should work for the Rebel a little bit. Uh, I've got quite a lot of the pack to try and get past. The Bentley, while strong at the smaller tracks, is quite severely aero-limited. I think it only does about 110, and that that's, it hits a wall. Of it will not go any faster than uh, <laughs> than that. That really is what you get. Um, being, by the looks of it, one of the few all-wheel drive cars, dear God, that Rebel is fast. So I believe the Rebel may well have the Funko engine. It's got a lot of power, basically. It's got way more power. It might have more power than the rest of the cars put together in this field, if I'm honest. Which means it is unbelievably difficult to drive, but very fast if uh, if it ever gets pointed in a straight line. And if anyone can get it working, it'll be nine tails with that car. Uh, we are going to have a little bit of a look to the inside. It's a smidge on two wheels, uh, and that's okay. Now, you're coming up towards that straight. Scotty's car is even worse than mine in terms of top end. That Escort does not look fast. I have built one of them before for B-Class. It was a weird car because it was really good at some tracks, but it is so slow in a straight line in B. It's going to get mugged by everything. Watch out for the insane AMC. Look <laughs> at it go! That's a lot of work to get that car stopped for turn one, and we are going to get stuck in a really bad place. Now, the only problem we're going to get is... Well, we can't really let Blue Team get a 1-2-3 here. And the AMC could actually play really good rear gunner for Blue Team because it could really irritate us with that acceleration. Because now I can't do anything. The only good news is it screwed over Scotty almost as much as me. Um, yeah, I don't know what we're actually going to do in this one. <laughs> I don't really know what I can do. I needed to get clear this lap and it's just not worked. Uh, it's kind of one of those frustrating races so far. Where we have been stuck side by side with everything, but not really able to do anything. That is ridiculous, the Rebel. Uh, it's good fun to watch. I'm glad I'm not driving it. Uh, I can just enjoy the spectacle. If I just throw a harpoon and it can drag me along with it, and then quickly disconnect it when we get to turn one, because, good God, I don't think it goes in a straight line. I don't think there is a single bit of this circuit that car is going in a straight line at. That's ridiculous. Um... But there we go. Me and Gliska are going to have to clear it. I think Stallion and the Leather Cap are too far gone up at the front. Blue team finally get around where they don't miss checkpoints. Uh, it's definitely not going to be three wins from three for me. I'd like to think I have a competent car, but we lost so much time early on. It's way, way too much time has evaporated in these early stages of the, of the race. That uh, unless they have more missed checkpoint shenanigans... We won't recover it in a couple of laps. We do get to watch the glorious, glorious muscle car with way more speed than sense. Goodbye. <laughs> kind of reminds me a little bit of my old Subaru 360. Not, I mean, that is actually probably more extreme than the Subaru 360 I had that looked like it was from an entirely different class when it came to straight line speed acceleration. Horrible to drive, but was unbelievably fast if you got it right. And that is what we are watching a little bit here. Um, Eliska is now up to a podium spot. We might be able to, we might at least be able to deny blue team a one, two, three. That is the one the one solitary hope that we have. Deny blue team a one, two, three. You see, I might be able to make life difficult for the rebel. Because my plan here is if we can just make it make it have problems. 
make it not be able to get out of this final corner necessarily as cleanly as it wants to, or make it take a funky line, so that when we come around to this time next lap, I might be able to beat it to the start finish line, because I don't know whether we'd beat it here. Oh, it'd be close. It won't, uh, won't quite get there. I mean, that was a little harsh from the Scirocco. Um, when mo moving across on that is a dumb idea. Like, I, I understand moving across to defend, but there's moving across to defend, and there's moving across to defend on a car that is so, so different in terms of speed that uh, that was not clever. It was not a clever move. I mean, it's... In the end, it won't actually matter in the grand scheme of the of the points. Blue team are still going to take a victory here. Um, regardless, pretty much a uh, 1-2 too much for us to overcome in this oh man there we go uh, blue team actually blue team have missed a checkpoint on the final lap I think something weird went on further back they had a decent sized lead and they did not when they came across the finish line so something went on further back in all of that uh, Scotty ended up down in 11th, which would suggest a missed checkpoint on that last lap. Oh no, Blue Team do get it just by 50 points in the end. I do apologise. They still win, but only it was a lot closer than expected. So, we head off road for our next race. The Ashbrook Scramble. The, <laughs> the muscle car won't be having fun here. I can tell you that much. The, uh, the muscle car will be all over the place. Uh, I might not be too bad. This won't work for me as well as we did at Ambleside. The big Bentley said quite heavily aero limited and this is a fast track. Yes there is dirt on the latter half. I'll probably be quite fast there but it's decent speed dirt and my severe lack of top end will come into play. The hill but, I mean, to be fair to the uh, Rebel, this will be better than it had at, uh, at Ambleside because it will probably lead by the time we get to the top of the hill because the sheer power going up the hill will be quite nice if it doesn't end up visiting bits of England. That's so fast. Up there, the is pretty damn rapid in a straight line. This is where I really hurt. Uh, we are not good coming up here whatsoever. I'm just going to leave it in fourth and hope for the best. We might be the slowest car, in fact, climbing the hill. Now, I should be pretty good once we get on this part. We should be able to at least make some ground. Might be slightly faster than the Escort, actually. That might be the only car that I'd be. Even then, though, that might have slightly better top speed than me. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, points. Let's have a look at them. Well, as it currently stands... Oh, we've just taken the lead from Blue Team. If Lissa can stay ahead of the above. Yeah, if... If blue have a 1-2-3, I don't think it matters what we do elsewhere. We can't win. So we cannot let them get a 1-2-3. I think that's how it works. Um, our little, one of our little baths might have trouble with not being on the old rally tyres. Can I beat... So one of the, the 1-2-4s. I keep wanting to call them a baths because of the new one. Can we beat... Either I'm actually surprised. I thought the rebel would be so horrible on the dirt that it wouldn't, it wouldn't be able to make up enough time. But these straights are so long for it that it doesn't actually matter. It has so much straight line speed. I think that thing will be gone around the ice. I would like to be able to see how much clinging on for dear life is occurring on the dirt section because I bet that is what is happening with that car. But. Uh, <laughs> It's so fast up this hill, I guess all that power up this hill makes such a difference in the B-Class cars that it doesn't get undone when we head onto the dirt. If we could get me and Eccentric past Leathercap, that would be good. Stallion's up in second, I'm not going to be challenging the Cadet for that second place, that much is for sure. I mean, we if we win this, our team will win overall. Red team will take the, the adventure victory. Blue team are going to be desperate to uh, cling on to a, another round. Make it go to a decider. Who knows what will... I can't remember, even remember what circuit I selected as the decider, so I don't know what team is going to suit. At the moment, we seem to be working 
at least some pretty close results here. Scotty's trying to keep up with the Escort. Uh, we need to get me an eccentric past Levercat, pretty much. Uh, it does look like we might just about have the cars to do it. Certainly eccentric is faster at a straight line. I am a little better in a couple of places. The Abarth is a little better in others. I can't, for whatever reason, my straight line speed is okay here. I just can't get up the hill. I don't know why. Like, we're absolutely fine here. We were catching it, and then we go up the hill, and then we lose it all, and Eccentric is going to come flying past. Yeah, the Abarth isn't great either, but uh, it does actually start pulling away from me as we get higher up the hill. Eccentric went for the dive, won't make it stick, loses two places at the top of the course. We have the acceleration on the Abarth, and that'll put me to a fourth place. There's 50 points in it now at the top of the table. We need to get that Integra past. I can't really try and do the whole back up the Abarth in this, though, because, well, you'll end up losing out, really. Uh, it's a little too difficult to try and pull that one off, so we're just going to... Well, we are going to be defending into this final corner. If it lets the Integra pass, then that's fantastic news for us. Make sure we don't run too wide. We can't afford any mistakes now. Um, in fact, it might even be the Fiat's. The Fiat's can fight. Maybe we've got the 124 past. It's close. In fact, the 124 has now got it done, although that, it, it was the 124 going past that's now put us to within 50 points. It's not quite going our way further back. We, there's a big squabble behind us. Oh, I don't know what way it's going to go. At the front, it's it's quite spread out. Sadly, it's quite spread out at the front. That's why this is, I, this is not a circuit I use all that often. It's interesting to throw in from time to time, but it is... Not my favourite of the dirt circuits. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. Bit of bit of a weird one. This uh, eccentric has now got the Integra at least up another position. Red team have got a decent lead all of a sudden. I think things went our way further back, and well, Levercap has now lost both the places to eccentric and Pedder. So they can st if we can stay as we are. Everything would be good. I might end up. I think I might end up losing out to the Integra. I think it's got too much speed up that hill, which is where it, things are not working for me. The <laughs> ludicrous muscle car is clinging on up at the front in spectacular, spectacular fashion, to say the least. Let's get that stopped down there. Oh, there we go. I think we might possibly, barring a missed checkpoint, and I know we shouldn't say this. You know what the curse of the commentator is like. But things are looking good for it. For a long time, it looked like it's going to be incredibly tough for us. Hell, overcoming a 1-2 is always a difficult... You need so many points to overcome a 1-2. It's a difficult thing. Can still go wrong for us. Any of our cars miss a checkpoint, we would be in trouble, certainly. Um, we are gradually pulling away from Eccentric and Pedda. I think me and, me and Glisco are kind of relatively even perhaps in terms of uh, lap time the Scirocco perhaps a smidge faster uh, the, the hill is what kills my car here the hill is not good for the for the Bentley everywhere else it's pretty competitive uh, you can see how much cars behind catch when I get stuck heading up towards the top of that hill I don't know if we're going to have much change quite spread out race to finish off here as we will again I mean, a lot of this lap is flat out there's not many laps that are quite as, as flat out as this one. Fling our way around the, I guess, penultimate corner. Ninetales is going to win and in spectacular fashion with what is possibly the maddest car you could possibly bring to this event, but it has so much speed up the hill that it is uh, more than good enough. Blue team get a 1-2, but it won't be enough to save the team adventure for them as we will get 3, 4, 5 and 6 and that will score us enough points to take the victory. As I said, I don't think even if Petrol uh, missed a checkpoint or Smeg missed a checkpoint, I don't think Blue would get enough points at the end of this one. Well, the Rebel came good at a circuit I didn't expect it to. Bentley continues to at least score some solid points. So, this is our final track, Greendale Village Circuit. It's going to be 
Half a lap, I love. Half a lap of everything going past me again. Uh, the Rebel might actually be the one to beat here, weirdly. It, mm. There's a long straight and there's a hill. Now, I'm not going to enjoy that. The Rebel will. However, the back part of the circuit is quite technical. And be curious to see whether the Rebel can, can handle it. It does start on pole. I will get a good launch. This is uh, what helps me. I'm going to get launch, as does the Abarth, but it won't match me for acceleration. The Rebel... I mean, <laughs> let it go. The Rebel doesn't get a good launch, but when it gets going, it absolutely flies off towards turn one. Uh, can we... Oh, I was going to see if I could duck underneath the Abarth and then realise, no, no, that wasn't quite going to happen. That's fine. Uh, now, we, what we want to do... That's what we want to do. We need to get past the Rebel quickly. If we aren't past the Rebel quickly, I have a sneaky suspicion... Um, Let's see if I get past it quickly. This is where we need to be good, and I need to not get held up, uh, which is exactly what's happening. There's way too many cars in one little space. Uh, we will go around the outside, and the Rebel can't fight me there. It will not have the grip to do that, and it won't be able to do much through the final corner, but it doesn't need to, although it does need to stay on the tarmac. It won't find much grip out on the dirt. This is where pain for me I know we're not fast enough down the straight. The short circuits we were good at. The stop-start circuits is where the Bentley excels. Bloody hell. That thing is brilliant. I, I couldn't... I wouldn't drive that. I mean, I, I can drive the immensely powerful... I, uh, that's got to have a Funko engine in it. We, I have driven it in when we ran it in a, in a video at some point. Um, you know, it's... Oh, bloody hell. Uh... Wasn't quite the idea of vehicles I had in mind when it came to doing this as a uh, kind of car set, rule set for this, but there we go. Um, yeah, I don't think I would have... I don't think I have the skill to try and keep that thing under control for a race. I also do tend to prefer having a car that's good overall for team adventures. I like to score consistent points, which is why I tend to have similarly rally-built cars that I know will work. I know this Bentley will work at every circuit, Mid-pack at some, leading the way at some. Uh, Point-wise, this is going complete garbage for us. Uh, oh, here come... I think the Rebel may have had a clattering with its teammates on this lap. Things have gone badly for the Rebel. <laughs> Don't think Leathercap knew where to go to try and avoid the AMC. Or probably didn't just realise the, cl the closing speed. I think that's the, one of the dangers with the Rebel. The closing speed is so great, and I'm talking incredibly great, that uh, it catches people out. It's, it's so quick to get to the back of you down the straights. Uh, we already saw Gliska end up across in front of it in one race. Leathercats managed to do it to a teammate in this one. So, <laughs> you've just got to keep an eye out for that thing. Uh, we will give the cadet a little push through the next couple of corners. Uh, my lack of top... If this Bentley had a little bit more top speed, it would be an unbelievably good B-Class car. As it is, it is a very good B-Class car, but it only works at some circuits. It's good at others... But there are some, like this for example, where it just doesn't quite. It's more competitive here, certainly. Because uh, I don't want to go out of fourth gear here, really, because we're going to struggle to climb up the hill. Gliska Scirocco has got some good top end on it. Uh, Points-wise, I haven't really been looking at. Blue team have got the advantage so far. Um, we're going to get stuck on the outside again, I should think. Uh, we might have to just let the Scirocco go. A little bit. Shroko might stand a better chance here. I want to slot back in in front of the Abarth, though. Three wide here is not a good idea. Right, let the Shiroko go. Try and slot back in without losing out to the Abarth. That's the tricky bit. Uh, because I think we're going to. I think the Shiroko stands the best chance of winning for Red Team. And I got stuck out wide through all of that. Um... Bugger. Because the Scirocco, the Scirocco might just lose a little bit in terms of speed through these corners, but it's way quicker than us down the straight. So if we can get that into a position where it can go, that's good. I just need to get third away. And points-wise, we are now to we are now winning. Although, yeah, it's going to be interesting because Ninetales falls back, but then goes soaring past on the run to the start-finish line. So that's going to be interesting. It's how far can those cars get ahead of the Rebel in the twisty sections. Can I retake... 
just I don't seem to quite work at this track. It's just the Bentley doesn't seem to, it's not stop starty enough for the Bentley to be to be good. Uh, the Scirocco, if it could win, would be fantastic. But of course, that's still quite a tall order. Any missed checkpoints? I know I saw Scotty miss a checkpoint, and I think that's what's put us ahead. Is that uh, the escorts had a bad day? Blue team have missed a lot of checkpoints along the way here. Um, Leather cap has dove a very long way to the inside as they go three wide. But the Abarth is the slowest of the lot of them down the straight. That's probably not the order they would have wanted those cars in if they could. Uh, it's going to be a three-way drag race with me approaching as well. I would help Gliska if I could, but I have no straight line speed. Scirocco will take it. Oh, the Scirocco takes it. We already get fourth, but we watched a great battle. Scirocco takes it from the Abarth and Cadet. Ninetales is incredible incredibly ridiculous rebel takes fifth in the end i don't think it had the composure uh, even if there hadn't been a slight teammate friendly fire incident uh, going on we get lucky to win that one in the end i think again missed checkpoints for blue team uh, <laughs> did not go well did not go well for them but a fun adventure nevertheless the bentley continues to be a consistent well performing vehicle for me which i am very happy about there we go. Red team take a 4-1 victory. That's like quite a flattering scoreline. Blue team did put up a very, very good fight. And that uh, will be that. Thank you all very much for watching. If you'd like to take part in the next one of these, uh, you can sign up via our forums. There'll be a link in the description of this video. Find the Ferraris versus the community section, and you can sign up in there. However, that shall be it from me. Thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, a uh, goodbye.